Hi, so in this video, I'm going to try and walk through um, an example of a uh, reflection and refraction problem, actually drawing the rays, reflected rays and refracted rays, um, and uh, to show you how to do it. Um, I have some handy dandy grid right here, and I also have this protractor. And the nice thing about the protractor is that um, it goes from 0 to 90 on both sides. And honestly, for the angles we're going to be looking at in terms of reflected angles and refracted angles, we only look at the acute angles anyway. Um, so we really only need angles from 0 to 90. So that's okay for this protractor. I tried to find a protractor that was nice and clear and had numbers the way our usual protractors go, but couldn't find it. This one will do just fine. So here's an example question. Um, this monochromatic ray of light with a frequency of 5.09 times 10 to the 14 hertz is incident from water onto a crystal zircon at an angle of 55 degrees. Determine the angle of reflection, draw the reflected ray. Determine the angle of refraction, draw the refracted ray. Okay, um, so first of all, a couple things here. Monochromatic. Monochromatic means one color. Um, there's one frequency and one color, and they give this pretty particular frequency, 5.9 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Um, but that is the reference frequency for the indices of refraction on your reference table. Um, that's uh, for different materials. Uh, that's how much light will slow down in that material. Um, there's also no units for index of refraction. Index of refraction and uh, coefficient of friction, no units. Um, because the formula for index of refraction is n equals c over v. C is the speed of light in vacuum, which you should know from wave characteristics. That's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And V is the speed of the light in that medium. If you do speed divided by speed, meters per second divided by meters per second, the units cancel. Um, so that's why index of refraction has no units. And so they listed a number uh, of different materials and their indices of refraction on the reference table. Um, that's page two of the reference table, along with the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, and uh, so we can get the indices of refraction of water and zircon from that chart. Um, but the indices are slightly different for different frequencies, so that's why they give a reference frequency. Anyway, so incident from water onto a crystal of zircon. Um, zircon is, uh, they, they can use it for things like if you look at uh, Swarovski crystals, those are kind of like zircon. Um, they, they're they more optically dense than glass. And so if light enters a crystal like Swarovski crystals, um, they'll make bigger rainbows. Like they, they use them for like sun catchers. You put them in the window and you put a big rainbow on the wall. You can do the same thing with normal glass, but, but crystal will, will do a better job. Light slows down more in those crystals than in regular glass. Um, so we have an incidence angle of 55 degrees, and it went to the reflected ray and the refracted ray, so let's write down our given information. So there's all our given information, things that we know. I looked up the indices of refraction for water and zircon from the reference table, page 2, the absolute indices of refraction chart. Um, then I have my incidence angle, 55, and I went the two other angles. Well, one of the first things we're going to need is the normal. Um, the normal is the perpendicular ray um, to the point where the, uh, the perpendicular line to the point where the incoming ray strikes. So wherever that incoming ray drops, you need a line perpendicular to the boundary because all angles are measured from the normal. So there's my normal line, um, and uh, that's right on 90 degrees on my protractor. And uh, so, yeah, all, all angles are going to be measured from that. All right, so first of all, I have my incident ray coming in at 55 degrees. We can see that it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 55 degrees. There's my incident ray coming in. All right, well, all the other angles are going to be on the other side of the normal. So I've line up my protractor and draw the rays from there. 
Now I know that the way reflection works, the um, angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Theta incident equals theta reflection, maybe call that R. I don't like saying R because both reflection and refraction start with R. Uh, so sometimes I'll just say RFL for ref uh, reflection. So there's my reflected ray, 55 degrees, there it goes. This would be the incoming incident ray, and there's my reflected ray. Um, now to draw the refracted ray, I actually have to calculate the angle of refraction. So the formula that I'm interested in is uh, Snell's law, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2, where n1 is the index of the first medium, and n2 is the index of the second medium. So this would be coming in from water, n1, and then it would be entering into zircon, n2. So water has an index of 1.33, and zircon has an index of 1.92. Remember, no units for index. Then theta 1 is 55 degrees, and I'm solving for theta 2. Now, one big deal um, with uh, working with um, trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, is you want to be in degree mode. Degree mode. Uh, right? That's important. Um, because if you're not in degree mode, then you're in radian mode, it's going to give you the wrong answer. So run the math through. 1.33 times the sine of 55 degrees is 1.08947, etc. Divide both sides by 1.92. Then you get that sine of theta 2 is 0.567433, etc. Now be careful. Theta 2 is not 0.567. Sine of theta 2 is 0.567. So you want to do the second sine or the um, inverse sine of that number in degree mode. Then you get 35 degrees for theta 2. And so I go to measure 35 degrees, measuring from the normal, and I can see there's my uh, refracted ray as it goes into the zircon. Um, now, you know you're on the right track because remember the mnemonic. So if you remember blah, big index to little index, the ray bends away from the normal. Um, so I'm not going from big to little. I'm going from little to big. I'm going from 1.33 to 1.92. So the ray instead of going straight, like if there was no refraction, it would just keep on going in a straight line. But there is refraction. Um, so if I went from a large index to a smaller index, the ray would bend away from the normal and it would go this way. Um, but that's not the case. We're going from a small index to a larger index, so the ray is going to bend inwards as shown. So that covers a lot of like the classic um, reflection, refraction problems. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you with regard to the reference table was the actual page um, where you can find the indices of refraction and also why I'm using yellow for my rays. That's not by accident. So yeah, I wanted to show you on the reference table, I pulled out pages two and five from the reference table. So here is page two. We have the electromagnetic spectrum and we also have the indices of refraction. Um, so you can see there's our reference frequency. That's what I was talking about before, the 5.09 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And these are all the different indices that we have. So water um, was the one that we started with and then we went into zircon. Um, the highest of the bunch is diamond. And then um, another thing to, to look at to pay attention to is um, if you have corn oil and glycerol going from one to the other, you're not actually going to get any refraction because they have the same index. And then going back up to the electromagnetic spectrum chart, um, the reason why I was using yellow for all of my lines is because 5.09 times 10 to the 14 hertz comes in as yellow right inside of 5.03. So if it's between 5.03 times 10 to the 14 and 5.20 times 10 to the 14, it is yellow light. And then my last comment is uh, where these formulas are, they're not on page two with the charts. The formulas for waves are on page five. I mentioned the um, ref reflection formula, theta i equals theta r, 
n equals c over v for determining index of refraction and Snell's law. Hope that was helpful.